Okay, I was asked the question, um, how do we know if a stock is going to get squeezed, short squeezed or not? And um, so this is this one happens to be running right now, the SB, XSQBG suspension blend. Now this is a very thin, uh, very low float stock. It only has a million shares in the float. And 9.7% of the stock is short. So it's, you know, it's only 100,000, but... It's only a million share float, so that is quite a bit as a percentage of the float. Now this might be running more because it's just that there's no, there is no float. But what's going to happen is every time this starts to pop, the shorts will will try to short it, and so then the previous shorts have to re have to scramble to cover, and they're going they're being filled by their buys are being filled by new people shorting here. And then as it gets this momentum, it also attracts buyers and away you go. Now, I mean, this thing is traded uh, 11 million shares already. It only has a million in float, so 10, you know, the float's turned over 10 times. Um, but so let's just quickly go and look at this. Uh, so this is uh, shortsqueeze.com. Um, I, I use it. I also go to the NASDAQ one as well. You just type in the symbol, it shows it up here. So days to cover is only 0.2. It does trade, but it is 9.7% of the float. 104, 104,000 shares, but there's only a million in the float. So a very thin stock. Um, but how do you tell it's going to get a squeeze? Well, this is, this is two things get attracted to it. Um, one is that the shorts, Star, I mean, people just short stocks because it's up. They're up it's, and for no other reason. Just like we buy stocks that are up for no other reason and they're just, the momentum is going. But we never, one thing that I don't do is try to short against the a trend. This is, or, you know, tra trade against the trend. This thing is is very strong. I wouldn't be shorting this. I, I'd wait for until the backside of the move. But look at this big move on it now. It tends to be, you know, one day wonder. Not expecting it to stay up at this level, but um, you know it's come from it's come from nine dollars to twenty one, up twelve seventy. So uh, eventually the shorts are going to be right on this. So what you're looking for, whether a stock's going to need a short squeeze or not, is you want to see. It's nice to see if there's a catalyst. Number one, it's always good to have a catalyst. Two. Um, we see, you know, a big short position as percentage of the float, and three uh, days to cover. If it's over ten days to cover, then it really, if there's if there's a um, if there's a catalyst, then that really gives it a huge squeeze. But this one is going the way it is because it has uh, it's a very low float now, attracting all the attention to it, and the shorts are getting squeezed on it. So we're looking for stocks to, to tell if it's going to get a squeeze or not. We see that it traded in this level in here. Uh, it was up a bit this morning off this high, you know, 850 area, but didn't take much of a pop, really. It was uh, in an area of resistance, you know, right around 12 and a half was the area of resistance. And that's what this level is here. And it got up to that, pulled back, traded sideways. But then it popped up through that. And then it flagged here. This was or this was the key point for us. Um, and I we didn't get a chance to. I think I alerted it, but I didn't get a chance to trade it myself because uh, it moved too quick, and I was watching something else at the time. But we get this pop, and it bear flags now, and it gets this next pop. So now this is where the shorts are really going to start to to get squeezed because you get a stock, you know, it's up into an area of resistance, double bottomed here, but. You know, and look at all this overhead for it. The shorters will just start to, to sell in this. And they see that it's a one-day wonder. I mean, it was a one for 40 reverse split back in August a year ago. Um, but it tends to be a one-day wonder. So, you know, the shorts will come into it and start to short it. Here was the flag. So we just, we see that all the, and then it popped and it got up to this resistance here at the 16, 60 area I was talking about and was trading in a narrow range. But when it broke through that and you get these, 
and it came back and held support. But when you really start to see these things surge like this, surge like this, and then got halted, consolidated a bit, and then another great big surge like this. Uh, sorry, I had bought some. I forgot to sell it. Um, and I just sold it. This is this is really is set up for a squeeze. So what happened? It is a squeeze. So what happens is the big traders, market makers, institutions, when they see a low float stock like this, and they see that it has a big short position or potential to be a lot of people shorting it, they'll come in and and you get the shorts. And when you get a big parabolic like this, that's quite often the short squeeze. <coughs> Because the, the shorts have to get have to buy at any price because it's going against them so strong. Just if, as if a stock is collapsing, you just sell it, you know, mark it out, and because you don't want to, you know, hold the bag, be a bag holder. So as it gets squeezed like this, the shorts really start to fuel it because they're 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 uh, covering their position. So they're covering their position. It's added by the money at the initial breakout going into it then you get the FOMO but eventually what happens is we'll get a big spike up and the reason that we see that big spike up and then the close down that's the retailers have finished buying they're not coming into it anymore you get a big long wick up and it closes at the bottom and then the next candle is red that's a short squeeze uh, that's the, the shorts really just panicking at the end of the at the end of the run uh, covering their position because they don't want to see this thing go to 25, 30 against them. And uh, so now we're getting spinning tops in here. We don't have that real big long wick up there yet. So this might not, this might not have exhausted itself from the retail trading. We see here's a big spike up on volume, uh, inside candle, a couple of them, uh, but on lower volume. Uh, you need volume to continue, but for now, um, you know, we haven't probably haven't seen the retail side of it or the buyer exhaustion yet. And um, we'll see if this starts to, you know, because it is at the top of the channel, 2150 maybe, you know, the support for it breaks below that. Could pull back quite quickly to 20 as the shorts start to pile back into it to drive it down. But the squeeze here, every time you get a you know, a flag like this and it pops out, you're going to get two things. You're going to get the, re you're going to get the buyers coming in because it's a, a breakout and you're going to get the shorts that we're selling in here covering and that gives you the squeeze halted. Covering in here, a lot of shorts going into it, but when it broke this wedge like this, then there's your, it popped out of that a couple of times, held support. Shorts get nervous. They start to have to get back into it. Everybody runs into it. Then it gets to the top of the channel here. We get this red candle spinning top pattern. Next candle's red. You need to get out of the trade. Shorts can read that as well. And they just pile back into it to drive it back down. Uh, but so, in, I, unfortunately on here I can't show uh, level two, but we would also see on level two that the buying coming in is just huge volume comes in, taking it out on the offer. Normally, when and, and that's what the shorts have to do. They have to just mark it into the stock, and that's what drives it higher in such a in a squeeze, as um, as they want to cover at any price because it's getting away from them. So I hope that helps. It's it, it is 